the civilization of Sindh spread over an area of approximately one million square miles has its relative remains in Afghanistan to its north, central India to east, and Oman to southeast. Monjadaru is the name of a very recent civilization of the ancient world. Perhaps civilization can be used only for Monjadaru, or maybe Monjadaru and civilization are one and the same. Monjadaru, about 564 kilometers northeast of Karachi, is situated near the river Indus. It is a central place as all roads lead to it. The quality of town planning with which this great city was built is difficult to find anywhere else. Today, the eyes wander to witness the wonders of civic amenities provided to the public 5,000 years ago. An amazing fact. Monjaduru is like a folk tale, the tale of truth. It is said that a few people came to find some hidden treasure on its hills. In their attempt to find the treasure, they failed, but instead, gave this world a civilization that turned out to be a treasure in itself. The native people found some old breaks and informed the local authorities and thus marks of an old civilization began to appear. An expert archaeologist, Mr. R. D. Banerjee, thought of the presence of an old civilization. He informed the Director General, Department of Archaeology, Government of India, Sir John Marshall, who inspected the place. And then the work began to unearth the lost civilization of the Indus Valley, which was to astonish the world. Excavation work began in 1922. World's renowned archaeologists participated with the locals in the work. In the beginning, it was called Mohenjo-daro, and after that, Mohenjo-daro, and subsequently, it came to be called as Monjadaro, meaning the Hill of the Dead. But if one looks at the place, it on the contrary looks like the city of the living, silently speaking the truth of ages. The people of Monjadaro were farmers and traders, as it became evident on finding some wheat and barley in old bags. They were also skilled in making utensils, weapons and tools. They knew the skills of metallurgy and stone cutting, as well as that of agriculture. take up the story from the start and at the spot. We are in the upper portion of the city. This is called the SD area. It is the main center of the city of Monjadaro. It is situated on the oval-shaped hill, a conspicuous part of the city. It is in fact a stupa 76 feet in height on elevated platform. It belongs to the era of the year 200 BC. It was constructed about 1600 years before the construction of Monjadaro. It was constructed with bricks of the old buildings of that area. On seeing this high platform, Sir John Marshall ordered the excavation work to begin from there. The big building was perhaps a place for schooling. It is about 236 feet in length and 79 feet wide, encircled by rooms. There is 
the well nearby. Wells of such peculiar design are still found in parts of Sindh today. Now we face another landmark of Monjadaro. It is a big water reservoir, 30 feet by 23 feet. It is 8 feet deep and has a staircase leading into it. This reservoir is waterproof. The floor is done in glazed tile. It is equipped with a proper cleaning and maintenance system with water outlets, etc. Close to the reservoir, there are eight bathrooms. Each bathroom measures nine and a half feet by six feet. They are so built that there is complete privacy while being used. Construction of Monjadaro has been done with red bricks. Bricks used have greater volume as compared with the ones used today. The durability of these red bricks of sin has a reputation since ancient times, which is a result of hard toil of the makers. Many kinds of utensils have been unearthed from Monjadoro, mostly consisting of impressions of animals, birds, snakes and fish. These utensils are very simple. These utensils have long bottoms. Small ones have handles, but very few of them are painted. It is also significant to note that utensils excavated from greater depths of the site are more remarkable and eye-catching, authenticating that Mondadaro is a cradle of not one civilization, but has many civilizations hidden beneath it. Today, psychologists emphasize that toys play an important role in building up a child's personality. Finds of different kind of toys reveal that Mohenjo-daro was a city of toys and they knew quite a lot about them. Toys depicting animals, birds and wheelbarrows were found. Even rattlers were found. Made of clay, these rattlers had small pebbles in them, which when shaken, produced a sound to entertain little children. Toy birds with small holes in their tails were also found, which perhaps were vessels. Many other toys were found, which resemble the toys of today, with thread suspensions, etc. Statues of men and animals were found from Monjadero. Impressions made on them seem to signify some religious leader of those times. One statue is seven feet in height. It is devoid of the body, but the head is intact. It has a beard and the head is flattened from behind 
which even today is considered to be a mark of attraction. A tablet of hard clay is made and placed under the head of the newborn child so as to flatten it from behind. This tablet is called Dira nowadays. Now we travel down to the portion of the city called DK area. There is a house which appears bigger than the rest and it seems it was the residence of the chief. city is an example of scientific town planning. Section of houses have been divided into rectangular regions. Every house has a courtyard with rooms on all four sides. It is also thought that pet animals were kept in one corner of the courtyard. Many houses were double storied. The upper story contained bedrooms and the ground floor had a kitchen and a store. Houses were so built that they give an impression of joint family living. A house for a sample contained long and solid walls, spacious rooms, with rectangular windows, and a specific alternative given to keep the rooms airy. houses opened in the lanes and these lanes led to small roads which were 5 to 10 feet wide. These roads then led to the main road. The main roads can be called the main boulevard of the city. Thirty feet wide, this boulevard passes through the city from the north-south direction. Unlike Egyptian and Sumeri civilizations, the architecture at Mondadoro is not majestic. It is simple, where houses have deep underground foundations. drainage system and dustbins at every street corner are convincing proofs of an organized municipal system mastered by the masters of the times. Their concern for cleanliness and attempts to keep clean declare Monjadara unique amongst its contemporaries. Despite an easy access to river water, presence of more than 700 wells evidence the fact that almost every big house had a well just because they knew the meaning and means of comfort and convenience. With the passage of time, these wells were lifted up. Sophistication of construction is the visible difference between the upper and lower portions. This difference denotes the standards of the relative ages. Since its discovery, cotton has been continuously generating wealth for those who know its worth. 
the wise men of Mondadoro knitted the fabric of their economy and trade with the silver fiber they grew in their fields. A portrait that imagination paints shows colorful and hectic life of those days quite identical to ours. Both men and women were particular in their appearance and grooming. dying shop are ample evidence for their sense of aestheticism. Just board and pieces found here are believed to be the oldest so far from the known world. On the surface of a fire brick are seen carved four rows, each with four squares. Perhaps it is a game board called Chaucer. The statue of the dancing girl is a unique piece of fine art. It reflects the most impressive delicacies of the peculiar art. Thousands of stamps found from the ruins constitute another salient feature of the civilization. Portraits of various animals and unidentified symbols are inscribed thereon. Some of these were used for the identity of the authorities, while others were used as trademarks for the goods and produce. Instruments of weighing have also been found here. Boat-shaped stems of Sumeri civilization are similar to those found here. It is deduced that boats were commonly used as a means of transport trade. Modern research on Mondadaro reveals that some of its buildings were constructed on platforms over hill tracks. These included the water pools, granaries, college and public halls. These are 70 meters in length and 8 meters in width. From the study of the construction of these huge platforms, one can easily know that the people of this grand civilization were aware of the ways and means to protect themselves from the horrors of river floods. While other old civilizations of the world are now open books, owing to the accomplished research, scholars are still curious about this mysterious city. And perhaps it is the only civilization for which an enormous research work is still going on in different directions for unknown dimensions of a lost world. Letters of Mondadoro are a mystery which could not be made open as yet even by the computers. However, it is certain that people of that era used to write from right to left. These letters are 300 in number. Signs of some letters found in the Easter Island, situated in the Atlantic Ocean, amid New Zealand and South America, are similar to those found in Mondadaro, which set new directions for researchers. The day this mystery is publicized, the world will know another world of the past. city was splendid and unique, but all of a sudden, it went down the earth. Out of sight, out of mind. How, when, and why? Today's historians have a real tough challenge to meet because Monjadaro still remains a mystery. Monjadaro is a continuing journey of a civilization where silence of the dead tells the story of the living city. The city that refused to die.